Hi, I'm Scott Mayones, and this is Rashab Kamari. Um, we are here to present our 18797 final project on fast fractal image compression. Basically, fractal image compression was a technique for compressing images pioneered in the late 80s and early 90s, and it uses uh, the self-similarity of images and fractal, they call it iterated function systems to compress images. We'll explain a little bit more of what that means, and then we'll explain how we've improved the algorithm by making it a little bit more efficient. So a brief introduction. Um, the theory of fractal compression is that we have a tracker, uh, which is the image we're trying to reconstruct with our compressed representation, and our compressed representation is a function. It's an, it's I, an IFS, an iterated function system. It's a function that we apply over and over and over again to an arbitrary input, um, and it reconstructs our image based off of uh, a derived representation of um, how to use a smaller portion of the image to recreate a larger portion of the image. And so really the problem is finding this T. Um, the baseline fractal image compression algorithm um, works very similarly to how you would expect it to, um, just from you know a common pop science knowledge of fractals. Um, we take an image, we divide it into m by m blocks, and we take the same image divided by two m by two m blocks. And so we're really looking for a mapping between this larger block and this smaller block. And the way we find this mapping is we downsample the larger blocks. We call these the domain blocks. They're essentially um, what we start with, and we're trying to find a nice representation using those to calculate our range blocks. And so we, for each range block, we go through, we search for all the domain blocks, we find the domain block that has um, the closest representation to the range block when using the optimal alpha and beta. So essentially, we model this as an affine transform. We find the optimal parameters, and we store the parameters and the indices um, to get the best reconstruction. And here's a, a graphical view of how this works. The problem with this classical algorithm is that the fetching function is extremely slow. This fetching function is what takes your range blocks and finds the optimal alpha, beta, and domain block for it. Essentially, you have to loop over all the range blocks, all the domain blocks, find the alpha and beta, and throw the mapping as a tuple. And so a lot of our work is how to speed this up to make it more viable for industry. And so I'll pass it over to Vershab to explain how our algorithm works. Awesome. Thanks, Scott. Uh, so if we can just uh, go to the next slide here. So the general concept of fast fractal compression is that we want to sidestep this uh, fetching function, as Scott mentioned. So the way that we do this is we try and capture all of the information in the domain representation in a different way uh, than just brute force searching over all the domain blocks. So the way that we accomplish this is that we use uh, singular value decomposition. So we can just go to the next slide here. So we collect all the domain blocks into this B matrix here, and then we perform singular value decomposition on this B matrix to get a set of bases, which is a U matrix. And each of the range blocks, R sub i, can be coded using the uh, set of bases and some weights that correspond to that range block. And uh, so this is, because the U is an orthonormal matrix, we can just, uh, the, the inverse is just a transpose. And so it's very easy to obtain the weights for each range block. And this is the sort of the new mapping that we developed. And uh, the S function just computes the left singular vectors, the weight, uh, sorry, the, the base T's. And then we write multiply by the, the weights. And then we just place the uh, output at the correct spot for the range block. And that's the entire um, sort of iterated function system for uh, our method. And so this is really great. Um, because we're using SVD, we only need to do it once. So the resulting algorithm is linear time, um, which is a huge performance gain on uh, all the other fractal uh, compression schemes that we've looked at before. Um, so some properties remain to be proven. We won't really talk about these here. If you want to know more about this, uh, look in our paper. And so we can, we can skip this stuff. And uh, so we'll, we'll just show a quick demo here of how all of this works. Um, All right, so here we have Lena. Uh, this is the range image, which is 512 by 512. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna downsample this image by half. So now you can see a lot of the finer details have been lost, like uh, in her hair and the feathers in her hat. Um, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this mandrel image and we're gonna learn an encoding between the downsampled Lena and the upsampled Lena. Um, and we're gonna use bases from this mandrel. Um, and we're gonna iterate, we're gonna use our mapping and we're gonna iterate over this to obtain Lena uh, back again. And you'll see how this works. So this is the first iteration using the mandrel basis. We get something that it kind of looks like Lena, but it's very, you know, it's distorted. Um, and so we keep iterating. This is at five iterations. It's looking a little better. And then at 10 iterations, maybe a little, little better. Uh, it's not clear. At 20 iterations, it's starting to really converge. And then at 25 iterations, we get back the original Lena image that we started with. And you can see here, uh, these are all the uh, MSEs. So you can see the, uh, the mean squared error is going down as we uh, do more iterations. So back to you, Scott. Thanks, Rashad. So that was a nice little demo of our algorithm at work. We'd like to share with you some results and conclusions before we leave. Uh, also of note is our data set. We didn't necessarily train a, a CNN or anything, no kind of model that actually is learning from data. And so our data set isn't necessarily as important, but we did use these images um, very intensely when evaluating our algorithm. And here's some selected results. Um, it's somewhat difficult to compare our algorithm to the baseline on larger images just because the baseline is extremely slow in these larger images. So it's already kind of non-competitive in that aspect. By comparing the PSNR for a 512 by 512 LENA uncolored between our algorithm and existing algorithms, you can see that the results aren't too bad. Um, it is important to mention that we did run this with face bases derived from an average face. This was specifically on face data. Um, but you can see that uh, fractal methods are not necessarily um, so terrible that they should not be revisited again, uh, which is encouraging. And so a few conclusions are the initial results for SVD are comparable to, but not significantly better than existing classical schemes. It seems significantly better, um, but you also have to take into account the block size difference. We were using a block size of four. They were probably using a block size of eight or 16. Um, and so that may introduce some noise into the results. Um, but regardless, it is a significant improvement over the existing fractal baseline. And it does provide an interesting context in which to analyze image data and how repeated structures within images can actually form um, your 2D signal. And so if you want to learn a little bit more about the mathematics, I mean, you saw the book links earlier, please look at our paper. Uh, but thank you for tuning into this rapid fire video.